As gardeners, we often hear insects labeled as one of two things, pollinator or pest. But in order to cultivate a healthy ecosystem within our gardens, we need to go much deeper than that. Insects fill many different roles, and the insects that we see, or even don't see, in the garden can teach us so much about the health of our soil and plants. Insects can be just as much of an indicator of a healthy garden as an unhealthy one. When you learn to read the signs, insects can be enormously helpful as you're gathering information about how to best care for your garden. Pollination is simply moving pollen from where it is produced in a flower to either a different area on the same flower or to a different flower as a part of the plant's reproductive process. Many pollinators are very charismatic, and so this common yet entirely essential process is probably something you already know a lot about. Bees and butterflies are almost universally loved and recognized, and I bet if you had to hold an insect in your hand, butterfly would be a top choice. Butterflies feed on the nectar that flowers produce, and as they go from flower to flower, drinking that floral sugar water, they are also moving pollen around. Bees, on the other hand, are generally eating the pollen itself, but they're messy, and while they're carrying pollen around, they end up leaving some behind at various flowers. Depending on the species of bee, you can also find them consuming nectar. These symbiotic relationships are mutually beneficial. Flowers get pollinated, and pollinators get to eat. While not as cute, wasps, ants, and flies are also doing pollination work in the garden. Adult wasps actually only eat sugars. Often this is in the form of nectar, but they will take any sugar they can get, even if it's from the apple in your hand. When wasps are moving from flower to flower collecting nectar, they're also moving pollen around. Some species of plants are even entirely dependent on wasps, including orchids and figs. Wasps have a bad reputation for being aggressive, but most wasps are fairly docile as long as you don't hurt or spook them. If you respect their space, they will respect yours. Ants are also lovers of nectar. They're less likely to successfully pollinate flowers, but it does happen, and some plants have even adapted to attract ants as little guards to keep other insects from getting to their nectar without pollinating the flowers. Flies are arguably the least charismatic pollinator, but similar to all these other insects, they're after that sweet nectar. Generally, they aren't as efficient of pollinators as bees, but in some cases they can provide more consistent pollination in early spring than bees because they are often active at cooler temperatures. There are also flowers that are specifically adapted to attract flies as pollinators. Most famously, the cocoa tree is reliant on a small fly called a midge to bear fruit, so you can thank flies for your chocolate. You might also find beetles doing some of the pollination work in your garden. Interestingly, beetles were playing a role in pollination long before bees and butterflies had even evolved, and plants that are still beetle-pollinated today, such as magnolias, are equally as ancient. Other plants that rely on beetles include tulip trees, pawpaw, and water lilies. But beetles can help pollinate more than just the plants they evolved with, and you might find them on goldenrod, yarrow, and even sunflowers. Herbivorous insects are likely the ones that come to mind when you think of pests in the garden. These insects feed on leaves, fruits, and saps of plants, leaving unwelcome damage in their wake. These insects, while bothersome, can also be powerful indicators of the health of your plants. Caterpillars, aka baby moths and butterflies, are certainly very hungry. You might be familiar with the tomato hornworm, which can skeletonize a plant practically overnight. Or you might plant milkweed to feed monarch caterpillars. Cabbage moth caterpillars can be particularly damaging to brassicas, and swallowtail caterpillars can decimate carrots, parsley, and dill in the garden. Similarly, grasshoppers also feed on the leaves of plants. They're one of the most ancient herbivorous insects, dating back 250 million years, and they eat a wide variety of plants. There are over 10,000 species of grasshopper, including the famous locust, capable of devastating swarms. You can find grasshoppers in sunny spots in your garden, usually munching on the leaves of plants. You've probably also seen plenty of sap-sucking insects in your garden. Aphids are the most famous, congregating in large groups and using their tiny, needle-like mouths to pierce the stems and leaves of plants. Another common sap sucker is the leaf-footed bug. These can be found on leaves and even fruits of plants, causing discoloration and withering. Different types of bugs and beetles can also be herbivores, eating leaves or fruit of plants. Notably, green dune bugs can be found on blackberries and raspberries during the summer, and you can find stink bugs on just about anything, munching away at leaves or fruit. These herbivorous insects can be wonderful indicators of the health of your plants. 
Aphids, for example, tend to be drawn to plants that have been given too much nitrogen. The nitrogen stimulates foliar growth beyond the healthy limits of the plant, and the plant will emit a chemical signal that attracts the aphids. It's proposed that the plant is trying to use the aphids to help slow its growth. More generally, healthier plants tend to attract fewer of these herbivorous pest-type insects. These insects are looking for food they can easily chew and digest, and it is possible for a plant to become so healthy that it has the resources to repel and even make itself indigestible to these pests. Healthy soil is the foundation of a healthy plant, and for jump-starting a healthy soil microbiome, Organic Rev is my go-to. This product contains the beneficial bacteria and fungi that are crucial to a healthy soil who work symbiotically with your plants to bring them the nutrients they need to ward off pests. Use the link below to get 10% off today. As much as we'd like to eliminate these herbivorous pests altogether, it's simply an impossible task. Even insecticides fail to fully eliminate these insects, and they often do so at the cost of the collateral damage of beneficial insects, soil microbiome, and the environment at large. This is where predatory insects can play a crucial role. Spiders are likely your first thought when I mention predatory insects. We could get pedantic about their official status as insects, but they're all arthropods and spiders in the garden interact mainly with insects. Yellow garden spiders, sometimes called writing spiders for the zigzag on their web, eat many types of insects, including mosquitoes, gnats, flies, grasshoppers, wasps, caterpillars, and even small vertebrates from time to time. They are non-aggressive, biting humans only out of self-defense. Their bite is comparable to a bee sting and is not considered dangerous to healthy adults. Joro spiders are very similar, though they are invasive in North America. They also feed on a variety of insects, even eating some invasive species that are passed over by native spiders. Their venom is comparable to the garden spider, and they are not considered a danger to humans. Jumping spiders are also quite common in gardens, and you may encounter their small, densely webbed homes. They are efficient hunters and can be quite clever, sometimes taking indirect routes up and down different plants to catch their prey off guard. Most jumping spiders are unable to puncture human skin due to their size, but in rare cases of bites, the venom creates only a sore comparable to a mosquito bite. Wasps, in addition to being great pollinators, are also great predators. While most adults eat only sugars, they do hunt other insects to feed to their carnivorous offspring. The prey can vary from species to species. Paper wasps prefer to catch caterpillars, while the golden reined digger wasp and great black wasp prefer to catch grasshoppers and crickets. Dragonflies are great to have around if you've got a mosquito problem, capable of eating more than 100 mosquitoes in a day. However, they'll eat almost anything they can catch, including flies, midges, bees, butterflies, and occasionally small fish, or other dragonflies. They do vastly prefer flies and mosquitoes, though. Even some ants can fill the role of predator in the garden. Red fire ants are omnivores, eating anything they can get a hold of from plant sugars to insects and even vertebrates. Sometimes they also eat seeds and through the process of moving them around can be vehicles of seed dispersal in a similar way that squirrels are. Another way that insects are contributing to your garden is through aeration of the soil. Aeration reduces compaction making it easier for your plants to spread their roots, as well as making oxygen available to the roots, which is necessary for respiration. This oxygen is also necessary to sustain soil life, and well-aerated soil allows for better drainage, preventing flooding while allowing water to penetrate deeply into the soil. Ants are wonderful soil aerators. Their tunnels are extensive, and they can help bring mineral-rich soil to the surface, where it can become more available to the plants. Additionally, many bees are known to tunnel through the soil. About 70% of native bees in North America nest in the ground, including bumblebees, sweat bees, and minor bees. Chances are high that the bees you've seen in your garden are ground nesting. You might even see ground nesting wasps around your garden. Famously, yellow jackets are ground nesting. Although they are more aggressive than the majority of wasps you'll encounter, they're still filling the roles of predator and soil aerator. A friendlier ground nesting wasp is the golden reined digger wasp. Like most wasps, they are quite docile unless they feel threatened. Overall, there are 125 known species of ground nesting wasps in North America. Ground beetles are not as charismatic as bees and wasps, but are still contributing to the aeration of your soil as their larvae burrow around beneath the soil. Ground beetles are often also predator insects, feeding on pests both above and below the soil depending on their life stage. Omnivorous ground beetles are also responsible for eating weed seeds, and studies indicate they can suppress weed emergence by 30%. The last group of garden insects to consider are the decomposers. 
This group of insects consumes dead plant matter and helps return those nutrients to the soil for the next generation of plants. Pilt bugs, or roly-polies, are in this category, although they are terrestrial crustaceans and not technically insects. Their diet mainly consists of decaying plant matter, although they've been known to eat living plants when conditions are wet. While they can be a little bit of a pest, they're highly beneficial for balancing carbon content and nutrients in the soil. Millipedes, also not true insects, act as decomposers as well. Unlike pill bugs, they're not known to ever eat live plants and are not poisonous. Cockroaches also belong in the decomposer group. Although some cockroaches have evolved to prefer human habitats, most species are minding their own business and eating decaying matter. Termites and carpenter ants, while they can be pests to our wooden structures, are also important decomposers, turning old wood back into usable nutrients for our plants. Overall, insects are crucial partners in the garden, working hard day after day to complete invisible tasks that help your plants grow. You may be familiar with some common farming practices that require the grower to complete these tasks manually, aerating the soil, hand pollinating, weeding, and even spraying insecticides as a stand-in for insect predators. If you can cultivate a diverse population of insects in your garden, you'll find that these tasks can begin to fall off your to-do list. Pair that with a healthy soil full of diverse microorganisms and you are well on your way to a productive garden that largely takes care of itself. How many of these insects have you seen in your garden? Have I changed your perception of bugs? Let me know in the comments. And until next time, happy gardening.